I'm going to talk a little bit about some deficit irrigation studies that I've been participating in since uh, 2013. So that's essentially when I came to USU the second time around. And um, these studies were prompted a little bit by some um, work that I had done a couple years before that uh, in um, the Colorado River Basin, which Utah is a part of. But uh, a group of uh, municipalities and the Bureau of Reclamation uh, put together about $12 million to look at a pilot projects for obtaining additional water in the upper Colorado River Basin uh, in the case of uh, severe shortages in the lower, lower river. And of course, the big use in, in the upper Colorado River is, um, is irrigated pastures. And of course, all these people were from the city, so all they knew about was the orchards and Othello corn and, uh, and Palisade peaches and, you know, just a few of the small crops. And so um, in Utah, as in, in uh, a lot of the West, pasture and grass hay is a pretty big proportion of the acreage. And particularly that was the way in the upper Colorado River Basin. Uh, so it's um, in the, the total was, um, I don't have that calculated, but it, it's about 90% of these crops. And so um, you can see that uh, if you look at pastures in some of these upper basins, it's a pretty high percentage. And um, it's a big crop, I think, everywhere in the state. And here's just a few irrigation methods and fields. Um, we look at, you know, crop water use. Um, pastures will use water the entire year. Their water use actually can decrease during the hot season because a lot of grasses are cool season. Um, but yet they still use a lot of water. But we wanted to look at, you know, what are the opportunities to um, and we're not doing this to, as a detriment to farmers, but as a benefit to farmers uh, if, if there's a higher value of water and their pastures can be maintained and suffer a, a small amount of yield and uh, yet get uh, a pretty good uh, payback on their water, either on other crops or, or by uh, letting others use the water on a lease basis. Um, just a couple of things about pastures. Um, so here's a, a pasture in Panguage, and they'll get into Panguage a little bit more. But uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, uh, when we irrigated early, we got in our three foot root zone. Uh, and of course, that drained away, but about 13 inches is the water that could be stored there without drainage. And then um, by the end of the year, we could be down to six and a half. So, so that's about six and a half inches of depletion. And I actually have measured up to nine inches of depletion from uh, field capacity down to near wilting point. And the pastures have um, um, maintained, uh, at least they've, they've survived, maybe not producing as much, but surviving okay. Um, this was a research site in Lewiston, and um, so we divided this into 20 um, plots, and uh, the plots are 60 feet wide, and that's based on the spacing of sprinklers. And then we have a 60-foot uh, buffer, and then another 60-foot. And we had four, five water treatments, one with no irrigation. You can kind of see those are the, the lighter areas, the zeros. And then irrigation till June, July, August, and September as we move into the one, two, three, and four. So four is full season all year long. And we in, here we had uh, soil moisture measurements in half of the plots uh, using TDR soil moisture. And here's just an example of uh, what the soil moisture looked like. Uh, this was on a full season irrigation. Uh, you can see those irrigations are not quite uniform and sometimes we have short water supply and just need to wait a little extra time. But uh, it, it goes to show you that at least most of the time we could keep uh, pretty good soil moisture, you know, in a, in a two to three inch uh, range for our soil moisture available from top to bottom. 
And then this this would be on a drier plot. And I, I put this up here just, I don't know, if you remember 2016, we essentially didn't get any rain all summer long. And so here here's a plot that, that went down quite a bit in the total soil moisture. But we do have um, some of the deeper soil moisture that, that kind of uh, hangs in there a little bit longer. Um, in all cases, the pastures prefer, in every one that I've looked at, they'll take their water from the top foot, then the second foot, and then the third foot last. And um, I throw this in here, and this is because fertility is a big issue with uh, pastures. And in 2015, we had a, a very dry winter, and it looked like the farmers um, through most of the valley were going to be shut off quite a bit from their water. And so I had two separate um, farmers who asked me, should I irrigate, should I fertilize my pastures? And I might point out these pastures were harvested mechanically. And so we did fertilize them and we didn't put a lot of fertilizer down. Uh, we could have pushed more yield. Um, but we put uh, 70 pounds down at least in this year and that's pretty typical of what we did each year and you can see that uh, even with with no irrigation we did get some good rains a little later in, in May but even with no irrigations um, or decreased irrigation we always got higher yields with with nitrogen application but this could be uh, corrected by, and I'm sure you've talked about it a little bit, but by legumes, um, grazing, uh, manures, uh, just other ways to manage the nitrogen besides uh, direct application. But this is a tall fescue, and so we applied some nitrogen. And here's a picture of nitrogen uh, treated area versus an area that was not treated just before the uh, just it was be during the before the first cutting uh, we we cut that generally in mid june and and here you can see kind of how we're taking harvest out and this is with uh, a weighing harvester so we cut a, short, a distance get a weight dump it drive forward cut another distance and weave our way through the field and we also um did some uh, remote sensing to look at yield and water use uh, in our fields. And here's just a couple of examples. We won't get into all of them, but here's, here's June, just a day or so before we cut the field. You can see fairly good uniformity in our, in our uh, true color RGB. Our near infrared is pretty uniform. And our NDVI is, is uniform also. Uh, this is a grazing experiment over here, so it just goes to that location. And then if we move down a couple months just before we cut the second time, you can see the differences in our near infrared and NDVI. And uh, in Lewiston, you can see that, you know, generally we are getting more yields with full irrigation, but we are getting substantial yields with no irrigation because almost all the yield comes in the first cutting. Um, and, you know, because of the, the cool season grass and because that's the, the time when it's uh, seeding out and flowering. And so we get most of our production early. And that, that's why grass make, is a pretty good candidate for some depth of irrigation later in the season. And you can see that we didn't get any substantial differences in yield from year to year and uh, the year after we stopped uh, we we flew the field and got got some NDVI data uh, and we didn't really see any stand reduction no differences in health in all those treatments but in Lewiston we did have a water table that was about three feet plus or minus it depend on who was irrigating <coughs> and and how much water was uh, in the ground, but that did contribute. That did contribute some to ET, and we could follow that by looking at the change in soil moisture day to night, seeing that some of that was moving up. 
the other research project that I'll talk about briefly is in Panguage, and we're, we're still uh, doing this project. Uh, and I show a picture here of when we were preparing it. Kevin Heaton uh, planted the field. Um, you can see that that field looks pretty uniform as bare soil, but with time, there was a couple gravel veins through it that were probably just a little deeper. And you can see that the grass, we've lost a lot of stand. And particularly where we had no irrigation, we've lost stand. Um, and here's, here's a full irrigation, and I'm showing this, and this isn't the way it is everywhere, but in a good part of the state, the winters are so dry that uh, we just don't pick up. We might get a melt and get an inch or so in the ground, but then by spring, time things start greening up, we've kind of lost it. So uh, I did several seasons with this, and we probably only pick up half or less when we're only down to two or three inches of precipitation in the winter time in these drier areas. So we don't really get back up to uh, full capacity over winter in, in the drier areas of the state. And this is that the same graph, just what it looks like, uh, the total soil moisture. And, and there you can see a little more difference to no irrigation. Uh, we generally get some pretty good cuttings. Uh, they're not uh, nearly as high as some places, but you can see that uh, we don't, even irrigating full season sometimes is not any better than irrigating until June. And uh, there's a lot of variability in the data and probably some of that goes back to the soil variability. But I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, the irrigation is most important early on with cool season grasses. And we had two varieties of grasses. Um, we had um, cash metal brome in a strip and then a strip of uh, tall fescue, 10 foot strips. And uh, this was taken just uh, last month as we, or the beginning of this month when we did the harvest. And I had some videos, but the wind is just really terrible. So it's always blowing a lot there. Um, but here's, here's the differences uh, from last year. You can see that uh, the first cutting taken July 1, we have in all cases a higher yield with the cash metal brome. The second cutting uh, in all cases, we have a higher yield when we average them together for our tall fescue. But in total, we have the tall fescue, I mean, the cash metal brome yields has yielded higher consistently. And part of that is because it, uh, it matures earlier in the spring and we, we get uh, some production in, in the seed head and the, and the stems that we don't get in the um, tall fescue. Um, and I guess just the bottom line is early water is most important with our grasses. Proper fertilization, whether that's with uh, um, double, you know, cropping with legumes and, uh, and not overgrazing is also important. And then the, considering the variety of the grasses, uh, some grasses do better than others. And then irrigation scheduling is important.